just like that. Oh, he puts it in. One, two, three. He makes it quick and easy. Fantastic goal, really it was. Manchester Slade through. Oh, he's got a man through a goal here. It's a stunning goal from Ovi. What's going on everyone, my name is Ovi and welcome to a new FIFA 22 tutorial on the channel. Today we're going to talk about something very very important in every FIFA version, about defending. And in FIFA 22 things seem to be balanced when it comes down to defending. But before getting down to uh, the video, make sure to smash the like button if you're enjoying the tutorial series on the channel and also Please remember this, no matter how many tutorials you will watch, you still need to put in the hours, the practice, in order to master everything you see in the tutorials. Especially with defending, you need to feel the game, to understand it a bit. And that happens only if you put in the hours. If you are new to FIFA, if you haven't played before and you don't know the basics, I will make sure to leave in the description links to previous defending tutorials from previous years in which I go through the basics. In this tutorial we will talk about specific ways to defend in certain scenarios in FIFA 22. And the best way, the only way to learn how to defend is to follow examples for different scenarios in different areas on the pitch. This is how you will learn how to react and which type of defending technique to apply. We're gonna start with a classic standing tackle from the defender. You are seeing in the top right corner also the controller. Make sure to keep your eyes on it so you get to see which buttons I press in each moment. What I did right here, I used both the sprint button and the jockey movement to get close to the striker keep my pace but also by using the jockey movement i was able to lock in to the direction of, a, of the striker and when i was close to him i triggered the tackle boom as easy as that the special trick let's call it like that here is the fact that i used both the running button the sprint button and the jockey movement to lock in a bit to the trajectory of the striker there are also a lot of moments when you will be able to get the ball back without pressing the tackle button. This happens because you are using the jockey movement when close to the striker. And what does the jockey movement do? Well, it helps your defender to be more aggressive and once you get closer to him, they automatically tackle the ball. If the uh, striker puts the ball too much in front, boom, the defender will get it so you can get the ball with your defender from the striker without using the standing tackle just use the advantage that the jockey movement gives to your player by making him more aggressive and by forcing him to automatically do a tackle let's talk a bit about interceptions in the last third of the pitch for example here i've made a mistake i've lost the ball but that is where we start to defend in the last third of the pitch. The thing with interceptions is that, again, require experience, but you can get the experience also by watching these clips. As we are seeing here on the screen, uh, the opponent would have the opportunity to pass it to the center back, but for me, it would be absolutely impossible to get there in time. The only option that I have is to cover the ground to the midfielder and hope somehow that the opponent will pass the ball there the chances are slim but i'm risking nothing and it's better also than uh, uh, zero chances if i don't do this move next example right here super super important i change my players 99 percent of the time or 90 percent of the time by using the right analog because it gives me the opportunity to select whomever i want from the pitch that's exactly what happens here in this particular example i am controlling my midfielder I see that the player is thinking about a pass over there to his midfielder, central attacking midfielder, and I use the right analog to select my player from that area and then immediately I cut the angle for the interception. The result is superb and you cannot do this without mastering the change of players from the right analog. Another example of aggressive defending in the last third of the pitch is again here. I anticipate 
that the opponent will play to the right back or to the CM and I decide to cover that part of the pitch. Uh, Consider the fact that uh, maybe his defender is slow and turns slow, I got an advantage there because from the moment when he triggers the pass, his defender will take a bit longer to do it and he won't have really time to change the direction. I've already moved my player in that area. I've made the interception. Now for my favorite way of defending, but it's aggressive. I'm using the center back. And depending on which formation the opponent is using, this is more effective or less effective. From what I've tested, it's best to use it against uh, players that use one striker or have formations with one striker, one central attacking midfielder. What I do right here is anticipate the fact that the opponent will play a ball in the middle of the pitch. And super, super fast, I select the center back and run forward exactly in that direction. I do that with the jockey movement because my interception will be better and I will be able to retain the ball in my control if I use the jockey movement in that situation. Extremely similar situation here again. I select my center back, he's got two options. He can either play it to the striker or to the central attacking midfielder. As I was saying, this is aggressive, this is risky. In this particular case, I guessed where he will go for the central attacking midfielder. But if I make a mistake and he plays differently, then I'm in trouble. But this time it worked. This is why I call it aggressive defending with the center back and risky. So make sure to use it only when you're a hundred percent sure that you know where the opponent will pass the ball. Moving now to second man press. Does it still work in FIFA 22? Yes, it does. Not a lot in the center of the pitch, but from what I've tested, it works best with the fullbacks. Uh, you will be able to use your fullback for the second man press, for the press at the winger, and then you will be able to move the player that you are controlling and cover the desired area from the pitch. You'll be able to intercept the ball or close an angle. But from what I've tested, and remember, second man press is more effective at the fullbacks on the wings, not that effective in the center of the pitch, in the midfield. Let's talk a bit now about sliding tackles or the hard standing tackle. These type of uh, tackles take a bit lo longer to load up, but they still can be very, very effective. You just need to watch the moment when the opponent is pressing the sprint button. When his player is running, that is the moment when you can try this. Because once he kicks the ball forward, he also has a period of time when he cannot do anything. That's the moment when a sliding tackle or a hard standing tackle. Hard standing tackle means uh, you keep pressed more the standing tackle. That, those are the moments when these type of tackles work. My advice is always check the opponent with the ball. If he's sprinting, then you've got a chance. Else, difficult, difficult to use this type of technique. Now for positional attacks and here, if you don't want to risk anything, if you're not sure about the interception with your center back, don't use the center back. Use the central midfielder, the CDM, they do the work. You're not going to use second man press here, you are going only to cover the angles. You want to have your team compact and use the CMs to do the hard work. If possible, even take back the central back the central attacking midfielder. Make your team even more compact. If not, use the two CMs, the two CDMs to cover the ground, intercept the pass. That's all you do in positional attacks. Last but not least, I don't like to wait for the opponent to come with the ball in my own penalty box. I don't like to defend there. It's like I'm inviting the opponent for a rebound and I don't want that. This is why I use the offside trap to force my defender line to go forward. If you master this, and when I say if you master this, th there's nothing secret about it, it's only practice. You go into a game and you activate the offside trap. To activate it, you press two times on your D-pad, you press down. 
you activate it and your defender line will go forward and you want to keep them as much in front as possible you don't want to invite the opponent into a position from where he he can finesse the ball he can uh, get a rebound you do not want to see that the other advantage when you do this with the defender line your team will stay even more compact the defenders coming close to the midfielders so guys these are the most used defending techniques in fifa 22 if you've got any questions leave a comment below and let me know we could continue with defending examples for three hours but we do not have that time make sure to follow my videos follow my streams that's where you get to see live the way i play and the way i defend hopefully you've enjoyed the video i am sure it will help you a lot don't forget to subscribe leave a like my name is ovi and i'll see you boys in the next videos bye bye